Today I want to show you our online multiplayer framework. This is a toolkit for hosting and browsing games, specifically with complex things with own playlist in mind. We are able to set server settings and playlist settings. And a playlist is a set of rules of maps linked to gameplay settings. So for instance, this Team That Magic game, this one has game mode specific settings that we can set. However, the power of playlists is that we can set multiple game modes within one playlist, which we can initialize for a wall session. Let's apply our changes and host this. So we just created this playlist. We can toggle between the maps that we are seeing and we can see, okay, these are the specific settings of this game. I've changed it back to two times the same map, but with different settings. So let's host. Nice, okay, so this is the lobby. And in the lobby, we can see the map, the settings per map, and the global server settings. And the fun thing, other people can join this session. So here I have another standalone game. I can browse for settings, for servers, and we can join these sessions right here. Nice. Let's do this another time with another standalone session join perfect so now we are here with uh, three people and everyone is able to see it and as you can see any client that's joined that's not the host that says leave game but only the host is able to start it and if we start the game everybody will get this ui transitioning into game and will load and inject the settings right into this new session so now we are with these three clients into this world. And this UI right here is just a display that the settings are propagated to every client. And we can message them. Hey guys, uh, hey you guys also here. And the other clients will receive these messages. This first game right here is a team that match game, uh, but the second game in this playlist is a domination game, which has different settings. I made this button here in the upper top, so we can cycle to the next game. And then everybody will get this UI. And now all the clients are in this domination game, which is perfect. And that's the power of the system. We can create playlists, have settings, and therefore we can inject all these settings into multiple games. And we can transition between games between the server and all the clients. So this is basically a tool set with uh, session management, player management, uh, team management can be built upon it, things like that. This is really needed if you want to host online games, even though it can be for um, uh, shooter games like Call of Duty, Rainbow Six or whatever, but also more survival games, co-ops, things like that. Or even if you want for dedicated server games, maybe like Ark Survival. Now onto a couple of important things to know. This is a very powerful system. Currently, uh, this is using the Unreal, um, I think it's called the Unreal subsystem to link. So that's only working on LAN right now. However, you can easily use this for Steam games, Epic games, things like that. However, due to plugin requirements, I've not uh, given these files on the marketplace directly. However, I'm able to offer them uh, separately. So if you want this toolkit to uh, enable Steam and things like that, um, I will make sure that there are separate files available that you can download which simply makes a connection between, instead of using the host button on the Unreal subsystem, using the host button on a Steam subsystem or whatever. And that's basically it. However, the whole framework, that is the one that matters. So the answer is yes. With this framework, uh, you can make your games multiplayer, uh, accessible with server browsers, host settings, things like that in your games and any platform of your choice. And the goal of this framework is really to give you a toolkit, especially a UI toolkit, but also a um, game setting toolkit, uh, a session management, things like that, to provide you with a good experience for multiple types of games. So if you want to have a Call of Duty game, Rainbow Six, a co-op game, a dedicated server games, everything will fit in here. In this video, I want to discuss a couple of things with you. First, I want to show you how this is working. So what we did, which active components we use, things like that. After that, I want to give you insight on how to use this for yourself. So let's say you want to make your own game type and want to make your own game settings uh, and how to adjust it. I want to show you things like that. So I think it's first important to show you how this is set up and how this is working. 
Um, if you open up the world settings right here, and uh, then we have a game mode. And in the game mode, this will have a game state class and a player controller class. And the game state class, that's the one that's the most important one. If you open that one, you will see that we have uh, two components right here. Uh, we have a session manager and a player manager. The session manager is here on the right. This one will determine, okay, which map are we using for the lobby? Uh, which one is for the main menu and the main menu is the one that we are currently in and it has some uh, some settings that you can check out now the next thing that's interesting is the uh, lobby however before going to the lobby i want to show you the player controller this player controller i have a session communicator a player communicator information prompt manager player controller main menu and a system asset advanced and the only th really thing that's interesting here for you right now are the player communicator and the session communicator. And the session communicator is basically only needed for a player controller's perspective, perspective to communicate to the game state uh, player manager and session manager. So keep in mind that the game state player manager and session manager, these, these are the ones that are in control. So nothing on the player side is in control. Everything is done on the via the game mode or the game state. And in this example, the game state. Because the game state, this one holds the, uh, the, the actual session. And the session manager, um, the most important thing right here is obviously all the session data. Um, we have a session configuration. And that session configuration holds all the session data. So we have this BP save session configuration. And here we have all these functions uh, and utility functions available to be able to create playlists, uh, configure settings, things like that. Um, so here you have the playlist itself. And I'm going to show you an example. Now that structure is being built up. So a playlist holds games. Games uh, has a map and a type and settings. So we say, okay, we have a specific game. That's this specific map. It is of this specific type and we made everything tag based. So it's easy to manage. And we also have settings that we want to assign to uh, uh, this specific game. And the settings that we assign are also tag based. And we created this generic structure of, um, of attributes. And we only say, okay, is it a, a float string or Boolean type? Therefore, we can define, okay, what kind of values do we want to inject? And therefore, it's really easy to make any type of setting that you want. Um, yeah, basically really easy. It's good to know for in-depth knowledge about this system, we have architecture documents available, which, uh, which I will link. So in this case, it shows, okay, how is the session manager connected to a session configuration? And also how are... How is this structure, this game config that was the map, the type and the settings, how are these set up? And here we have identified all kinds of game settings that we uh, are using. However, you can just easily manage that and add anything that you want. And here below you can also see, okay, we have a session communicator and what is it doing and how is it interacting? But besides a game configuration, we also have uh, uh, session settings. These are more global because a game that is active and the session settings that's more uh, a global uh, variable. Uh, for instance, like, okay, what are uh, the amount of players? Is this a LAN match? Uh, is there a password for this session? Uh, what's the session name? Things like that. And these, this is really the information that you inject into, for instance, like a Steam or, or whatever. So if you transfer that knowledge to what you see right here, then you see here on the above here, these are the session settings, right? And here on the right, we have game settings. And the game settings, uh, are we have an array of games. And the array of games, that is what defines a playlist. And due to the use of the structure, you can make uh, many, 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 many games. And therefore, it's very flexible, very scalable. I love it. And now, so what does it do? So if we... Uh, edit a playlist and things like that and save it so when i click apply changes or things like that then we save it uh, uh, 
as okay these are the settings that we want however saving it and making it accessible to other players that are two different things because now we only have saved it locally um, but when i host the game i want other people to also be able to access these settings right and i want the these settings to be used for instance in steam i want to show and the many how, how many players there, there are or what kind of type of game we are playing so at the moment i click host then all these local settings that i have right here these are injected into our session uh, manager and that session manager that one transfers the the data to another game so if we click host game we're opening another map now we are in the lobby map however we still want we want these settings right and we save these locally but now we injected them into the session manager uh, in the game state that one is now here uh, we have loaded it in and now from what we loaded we can send it back to anyone who's interested so that means now if a client joins we can actually see the uh, 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 all the data uh, but besides seeing it we can also use it and that's the power and therefore the game uh, game state uh, manager that one is the thing that handles it so if i open up the lobby map that's this one we also see okay we have a game mode of right of the lobby and this game mode will also have a game state class right here for the lobby and this one will obviously also have the session manager in this specific example in the lobby we also have a team manager and a score manager and a play manager and a chat manager because we wanted to chat so you can see hey we are actually able to uh, and to talk to each other so you see that there's a live connection there's no other reason for that to be included the player manager that is simply holding okay which players are currently active um, but that doesn't hold information about okay what team is assigned to things like that um, and if you want to assign it to teams then i say okay we also have the team manager so this player is in this specific team and then we can also have scores that is something uh, optional that's that's really not needed for the system However, if you want to assign a team, a score to a team or a score to a player, things like that, then it's also need to manage and needs to be communicated between. Especially if you want to say, hey, uh, this session requires X amount of score to be completed, things like that. Now, when you are in the lobby, you also want to transfer all these settings back to your game. So I made this example map for a game. What you will see is in a, just an empty map uh, like this. And, uh, it's not, uh, with just some player starts. However, this one also again has a game mode and on the game mode we have a game state in the game and that one will have also a session manager and that session manager retrieves the data again from okay we started the session and then injects all that information back. So now on to how to use this in your own game. Please make sure to check out these maps that we have right here. So we have a map for the game, a map for the lobby and a map for the main menu and you can open these maps and check out the game mode and on the game mode you will see okay these are the components that are assigned and if you want to use this on your own game please assign the same components and then you are set to go now let's talk about the settings in this uh, specific example we don't do anything with the settings the settings are simply just here as an example in our own projects we are using the settings however for this framework we are not we just want to show you how to use it. So what we did is we made this a blueprint interface game setting distributor. And I'm going to show you an example how that is working. Um, if implemented, obviously in the class settings, then we will get this event, uh, event sent game settings. And what we do right here, we get all the game settings that we have. And so that's everything that you define so that these are the tags that you define. So as you saw, you can just create any tag that you want. The only thing is you need to be able to listen to it. So here we are listening to say, hey, is the gameplay tag, is it allow friendly fire? So if that's true, then we're going to set a variable. In this case, I'm setting it in a team manager advanced. However, this works uh, anyway uh, uh, for any other system the same. So let's say you have an attribute manager or maybe something else uh, 
let's say you have a level manager well then you implement this interface then you're going to click on uh, say hey is the tag the same as an xp multiplier and then you you just make your code and say hey the setting that we have right here that is has this specific value because here we can see uh, it is a number value let's say the xp multiplier is in uh, a, a float variable so then you set that variable based on the setting that you are retrieving so that means that you can simply make any setting that you want via a gameplay tag listen to it like make a boolean say is it the same or switch or whatever and then implement what you want uh, set a variable uh, execute uh, some code or whatever so that's really really easy so now you know how to add this to your project uh, well uh, you also need to know that uh, the current ui that we're using that is using common ui so if you add this to your project then you will need to enable common ui uh, like so and obviously in this specific example we are using all kinds of different project settings in the configs for interaction traces uh, a mouse cursor things like that so uh, please make sure to check out the configs and maybe copy paste it in this project we are using the unreal subsystem for the connection and that's only working on a LAN network so no vpn etc however you obviously want it to connect to uh, eos or uh, steam or whatever we will provide separate uh, documentation for that and a couple of separate files which is simply drag and drop and basically it works however for testing purposes especially in the early stages of the game this is perfect then i recommend just keep it like this uh, uh, keep it running it locally so you can really quickly connect the test and in the moment that you want to publish uh, just connect any steam sdk or whatever and bam set to go for beginners, I would advise use this project as uh, as the base because of the configs, etc., and things like that. And otherwise, uh, try to reuse the UI. Just keep the same settings. Uh, uh, work from the base. Use the same uh, main menu. Um, don't go too much into depth into the game settings. Only uh, listen to it, switch it, implement some code, and that's it. And especially don't touch the, uh, the code of the session manager if you're beginning intermediate users. Obviously, uh, do your thing, but it's not really needed. It's, it's already working. So if you have questions uh, or want to reach out, please feel free uh, to do it in the Discord or just below. Um, I know this is a very big system. However, uh, it's worth it. It's uh, very powerful. You can simply use this for any project. You can also use this for our current templates, like our um, uh, survival template. And uh, that will make sure that the survival template is also accessible via browser, lobby system, and eventually via Steam or whatever you desire. I hope you have a great day and thank you for watching. Bye. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.